<laughs> it is so cold out there today. I'm wearing like five jackets and I'm still freezing. Anyway, hello one and all. Welcome to Seen Through Glass. Welcome to the new entry level, but more importantly, rear wheel drive Porsche Taycan. Uh, now I've been a fan of the Taycan ever since I first had a go one in Geneva last year. I like the way it looked, I like the way it felt, I like the way it performed. It was an EV and Porsche's first EV, but it did feel Porsche. This car should feel even more Porsche because I think one question all sports car manufacturers are gonna have to keep asking themselves as they slowly embrace EV culture is how do you make an electric vehicle appealing, exciting, emotive for a petrol head. Those of us who are clinging on to the combustion engine, how do you make these cars great fun to drive? Could making them rear wheel drive be the answer? I reckon. Let's go find out. Now it's not just the fact that all the power is going to the rear wheels of this Taycan that make it potentially more exciting to drive, it's also lighter than its all-wheel drive counterparts. Because we've lost the motors at the front and all the gubbins that come with them, we've saved 90 kilos over the Taycan 4S and Turbo and Turbo S. That's kind of 488 piece to levels of weight saving. It should mean that this car is far more nimble on the road. The front end should turn in a lot quicker and, well, kind of maybe feel a bit more like a 911 because the majority of the weight is now at the back. But let's face it, whenever I think anyone here is rear wheel drive, there's only one thing that really comes to mind and that is power slides or, or drifting as YouTube coins it. And so that's what I want to try because in my mind, I'm like, how easy is it going to be to drift an electric car? I mean, there's no revs, there's no gears, there's not much sound to judge things by. But then also a lot of the talk is usually the kind of front end of the, the power delivery or the power deployment. So maybe it's going to just burn wheels, burn rubber, like no end. Then the cars are heavy. I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out together. So I'm going to go into sport plus mode. There we go. You can hear the electric sport sound kick in. And then if I hold traction off, we go into PSM sport. We don't want that. We want PSM switched off. And let's see what happens. I hope I don't crash. Well, nothing, nothing really happened there. That was disappointing. <laughs> I just gave it like, that was pedal to the metal, Sport Plus traction off. I had a little bit of gravel moving, but the car didn't move really. Let's try that again, that can't be right. What? Nope. I mean, that was nearly a 90 degree angle and I literally floored it. Now I will go to say that whilst it's very cold today and a tiny bit not icy frosty on the roads it's bone dry and these are relatively new tyres on this press car so a lot of grip I suppose. What about can we do anything out of here? Come on come on come on car. Oh there we go there we go okay. <laughs> what was that about not crashing? So that was weird because twice with a lot of power, nothing happened. I feel like there, I almost forced the car to break a little bit of traction through the movement and then gave it a big kick and caught myself out a bit, but I caught the car. It's the most important thing, we haven't binned it. Now, the sort of interesting thing about this car is whilst it's lighter and whilst it's rear wheel drive, it's actually down on power quite a lot in comparison to other Taycans, we're at kind of circa, well, just under 400 horsepower, which, you know, sounds a relatively decent amount, but don't forget the weight of this thing. And 0 to 60, it's five, five and a half seconds, which again, doesn't sound awful, but in the world of EV sports cars and in the world of Porsche, that's not that quick. And I have to say, it doesn't feel that quick. It, and it's making me think that maybe that's why I'm not breaking traction. Maybe we just haven't got enough power to literally spin up those wheels and and the torque is actually not as instant as I sort of thought it might be as I say in Taycan Turbo and Turbo S when you launch it oh my god your whole body is forced 
backwards in this it's a little bit more gradual and it feels like torque builds a little bit further in the rev range or the de delivery range anyway i need to try and find another corner to see what happens but now i'm a little bit nervous now i'm a little bit edgy because as i say just giving it a ton of power seems to not do a lot but if i can move the car by kind of jerking it around a bit and then adding the power it feels like at that point we're going to start sliding but yeah right here we go again yeah it, it doesn't like the standing start stuff definitely doesn't like the standing start stuff i need momentum there we go there we go but i feel like traction still kicked in I mean, I got well out of the throttle and it just cut all the power instantly. There was no gradual decline. It was almost like traction kicking in. But yeah, you need you need to carry some some speed or some movement into the slide. I'm not sure I like this. <laughs> this power sliding, this rear wheel. It's just a bit unnerving at this point. Maybe I'm, I've got to learn it a bit more, I suppose. But it's definitely not a traditional rear wheel drive power slide car. Definitely not. Now I freely admit I'm no pro drifter, so it may be my technique that's to blame, but I'm starting to get the feeling that you don't buy the Taycan wheel drive to be a hooligan in. Uh, so what are the other kind of benefits? What are the, the elements of this car that may attract Petrolhead's drivers to it? I mean, really, it all comes down to the weight. Because you have less weight over those front wheels, it is a little bit better than the all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive Taycans because the front end is a little bit more sharp. It sort of feels like you're on your tippy toes. A little bit more like a 911 Dow, I say it, but I don't think it's night and day or not necessarily enough for me to go, wow, this is the one to have because the all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive Taycans are so good already, like honestly. And then, I don't know, it's leaving me a bit confused and a, and a tiny bit frustrated, this car. When in Rome, <laughs> if I'm anything like, what, 10, 15 miles within the radius of Dalesford, you know I'm gonna stop here for lunch and a coffee. So yeah, I'm confused by how I feel about this car. You know, as I said at the beginning, I'm a Taycan fan. I do really like the Taycan, but this rear wheel drive variant is a bit like, huh? as I said, it's supposed to be the entry level car, right? The most affordable Taycan. It starts at 70 grand. But it's not 70 grand because by the time you've done any kind of options, as with every Porsche, the money just starts adding up to have a Taycan wheel drive in this spec over 100 grand. Over 100 grand! At which point you're like, huh? And then as I say, like, I'm not sure that the driving experience is really enhanced enough to sort of warrant you choosing this over one of the four-wheel drive cars. In fact, I kind of miss having the four-wheel drive cars. I think they're just a bit more potent. That speed is hard to beat. And then the big, big problem with this car, the elephant in the room, is the recently unveiled e-tron GT from Audi. Because that's entry-level version, the Quattro, I think is 79,000 pounds, so maybe 10 grand more, has loads more options as standard. You get four-wheel drive and a little bit more power. Okay, it's not supposed to be much as a sports car as this, it's supposed to be more of a GT, but I think it might be a bit more of an attractive proposition. Fundamentally, if you're gonna buy a Taycan, just, just try and go all out and get the full whack. I don't think this one really makes much sense. And I've proven a point to myself because I knew I was going to be getting out here to drive, you know, to really push this thing and extract all the fun I could. I kind of thought that maybe I'd burn through the battery quite quickly. And it's a, it's a very cold day. And yes, 49% battery charge remaining. When I picked the car up from Porsche Reading, it obviously had a full charge, 100%. So 49% and 107 mile range. I believe Porsche Reading is like 65, 65 miles from here. Let's, uh, let's put it in on the Google Maps. 60 miles. So I should be fine. 
as long as I drive sensibly. That's a bit boring, isn't it? Didn't buy the rear wheel drive variant just to cruise along in. Oh well. Well, I've made it back to Porsche UK relatively easily in the end. I think 22% battery still remaining around 50 miles of range. I think I did about 140 miles in total today. Most of that pretty flat out apart from the journey back here. And, and to kind of sum up my experience, you know, I still think the Taycan is fantastic and probably still the best EV sports car for sale today. Yes, there we go. There, I said it. I just don't think this particular entry level rear wheel drive version is for me. I think if I was buying a Taycan, I would do everything I could to stretch to one of the four wheel drive variants with a bit more poke. At this point, at this price point, at this power level, I think that e-tron GT looks like a really good proposition, but I need to try that out and see what it's like. Fundamentally, it's going to be very similar to this. But anyway, I'm getting, I'm rambling now. Uh, I hope you found this video interesting. I've definitely seen clips of other people getting this thing far more sideways than I was able to do, and I'm not quite sure why that has been, but that was my honest and true experience, trying to get that thing to do a bit of a power slide, to try and step out. So as much as I ever got was, was maybe 10, 15 degrees of angle. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.